Hello dreamers, one of the goals of this channel is to invite people to explore the world and if they can travel, at least dream and learn about the fascinating places out there. Today we're lucky enough to have National Geographic photographer Jim Richardson. Uh, welcome to this uh, YouTube channel, Jim. Oh, good to have, good to be here. Thank you so much for uh, for let me speak to all your listeners. This is cool. Fantastic. So let me let me ask you. So uh, I'm not sure if you're gonna know the answers of, of these questions, but um, I did some research and, and I found that there's a country where the official animal is the unicorn. You know which country is this? Yeah, it is. It's it's Scotland. <laughs> it's Scotland. A Scotland. It's a it's an old Celtic thing. Yeah, it's an old Celtic thing, you know, it, it, one of those things that it meant purity and innocence and power and, uh, and all that. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a great history. It used to be before the unification of Scotland and England, the, uh, the crest had two unicorns on it. And then when James VI of Scotland became James I of England, you know, he replaced one of the unicorns with a lion. And and there's never been there's never been peace since. Okay, I, I didn't know that. So I, I I read that worldwide there's around two percent of people that they have red hair, but there's mm -hmm. a place that has between six and thirteen percent, depending on who you ask. Which country has the highest proportion of redheads in the world? <laughs> well, that would be Scotland again. Yes, really. <laughs> what? What a I know that. I know that particularly because a photographer friend of mine, Kieran Dodds, has done a, uh, a wonderful book called Gingers. Okay. Now in Scotland, the, yes, they're redheads, but it's gingers. And it is a very particular um, genetic trait. And it is a very particular color. It's just not any old redhead. It's gingers. Yes. Wow. So I, I love nature. You photograph uh, lots of, of landscapes. Uh, and I read uh, there's a very old tree in Europe. Could you guess what is the country that is home of the oldest tree in, uh, in Europe? Well, it is somewhat debatable, but since I am a fan of Scotland, I'm going with the Fortingall yew. <laughs> there is a yew tree in the little town of Fortingall. It's over in the corner of the churchyard. And depending on who you believe, it's two to 3,000 years old. Some people say five to 9,000 years old. Um, that's probably debatable. And, uh, but it, it's very, very ancient, you know, and it's just surrounded by uh, these legends. There is this really juicy legend that Pontius Pilate, Pontius uh -huh. by Pilate uh, uh, of the Bible, uh -huh. was, bo was born in the shade of that yew tree. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, it's, it's such a coincidence that all the answers, they take us to, to Scotland. So I guess it's, <laughs> it's, it's destiny. And uh, if, if I ever travel to Scotland, I would probably think of you as a person to ask a question. So I would like to start here. What is yeah. Scotland famous for? and why your intimate photographic relation with this country is the dynamic weather its people what is it mm. I'm, I'm just wondering well I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way i i got my first story in scotland from tom kennedy at the geographic because uh i had done a couple of thankless stories and he he wanted to offer me a kind of a plum and so he he called up and asked if I'd like to do a story on Scotland, and uh, that was 25 years ago. And I, uh, I uh, knew nothing, <laughs> and and then I started doing all my research. And I went over and I did the first story, and I was so petrified that I was failing. It was a traditional old country story for National Geographic, and they're very difficult to do. And I knew I was failing, and and they were going to figure out that I was a faker. You know, and uh, I didn't know what I was doing, and but it worked out. It it it, it worked out, and then we piggybacked on another story in Orkney, and then we piggybacked another story on Whiskey Country, and another story, and, and it just kept going on and on and on. And I, I progressively fell in love with the place, um, and decided, you know, I could do worse in life than having devoted 
uh, a lot of my creative talents to a place that I really liked. And I really liked because it's, well, it's got all this great history. You know, when, when, when Shakespeare, you know, when, when Shakespeare was looking for juicy stories, you know, he always went back to Scottish, uh, you know, murder, <laughs> you know, so there's all that, all that kind of stuff. Deep, deep history. Dramatic landscapes. Oh yes, I mean you you go out on the uh, particularly the northwest coast or out to the uh, outer Hebrides or uh, any number of places. A dramatic, gorgeous landscape. Great traditions. Uh, you know, costumes. You know, kilts. <laughs> uh, bagpipes. Funky, strange games like you know. Uh, uh, hurling hammers and uh, all those kind of things that you will see at a uh, Highland gathering, you know. Um, all of it, it's, it's very, very, very rich um, and nice people. Mm -hmm. So all of, I think all of that came together. So there's all those, all those kind of traditions, the, the feuding, the Highlands, the islands. Uh, and I, I, I like to say, I come from the Midwest here in America and we don't have many lighthouses you know, sure. we don't have any, we don't have any beaches. So, uh, so it was an easy, uh, easy thing for me to fall in love with. And Scotland is a land of, of three languages. Can you explain which languages are these and, and the historical reason for this to happen? Um, if you're willing to do so, if you can provide some background details, if you can. Oh, uh, uh, what I, what I, what I can't tell you, I'll make up. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, that's, you know? that's, 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 that's what a, it's that's all a, about creativity. Remember? That's, that's how, that's how you do think in the Scottish Highlands. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, so those like those three languages would be English, obviously, you know, um, Gaelic, Gaelic, the old, uh, Celtic language. Um, and there are two branches of that, which I cannot recite, uh, at the moment, but, but the ancient Celtic languages uh, that would be, uh, Scots Gaelic that would be still spoken out in some of the, uh, the islands. And so for instance, um, here's, here is a, uh, an appropriate, uh, Gaelic word, uh, for a place. This is, uh, Logavulan. Logavulan is the name of a place on the south side of the Isle of Isla. Mm -hmm. Isla means island. Uh, so that's another Gaelic word. And Logavulan is a little place on the south coast of Ireland. And that's where they make Logavulan whiskey. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you, you get, with a lot of those old Gaelic words, you get place and meaning connected. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very important. And, and why, of course, you know, it isn't just sort of cultural niceness to have the Gaelic word on the signpost alongside the English word. You know, it really does convey meaning. And if you know enough of the Gaelic language, you will kind of see that, oh, that's, that, that signpost means, uh, means something. Then the other is Scots. And, and Scots is a hybrid language. Many people in Scotland would not call Scots a language. This is, this is what we think of when we hear the song on New Year's Eve, when we sing Auld Lang Syne. Mm -hmm. Auld Lang Syne from Robert Burns, from the, from the poem, and uh, which means old times gone. So all, uh, and so some of it is in, is in English. And then there are these, these Scots words that creep in, which came from, uh, a lot of it came from the, the era of Robert Burns writing all those all those poems. He took Scots and made it a, a poetic uh, language at a time in which it was just kind of uh, is one of those th things where uh, a slang uh, uh, got elevated uh, to to be to be language. When, uh, I, I have so you'll get a taste of it. Absolutely, uh, go for it. When, yeah, so uh, if you uh, if you were to listen to one of those poems the the oh the first one here is is called the uh, is a burns poem called call the owls i know i'm not saying that but call the owls you know which means call the cows home like so so the, the poem goes call the owls to the nose which is like the, the glens down by the streams so call the cows to call the owls to the nose 
Call them where the heather grows, call them where the birdie rows, my bonnie dearie. And you can go in. As I, as I got down the waterside, there I met my shepherd lad. He rode me sweetly in his plaid, and he called me his dearie. So, so it's, it's all about this, this, this lad out in the field, and he meets his, his girlfriend and, and all that. But you can hear the, the sing-song quality of it. If you get to the, uh, if you went to a Burns Day, Robert Burns Day, you know, in uh -huh. Scotland, or you're here in America, you can be sure that they will do the address to the haggis. And haggis is this, it's a meat dish, you know, of, of various parentage, shall we say it that way, that, that uh, puts a lot of people off. But there is the ode to the haggis or the dress to the haggis. And, and, and it really has that, that sing song equality that I love. For far ye honest, sonsy face, great Clifton of the pudding race, that pudding race is the haggis, <laughs> sausage, you know. Great chieftain of the puddin' race, aboon ye them are ye take your place, paint tripe or fair. Weel are ye worry your grace as langs your arm. As long, uh, I said that wrong, as langs my arm. So, as long as my arm. So, that's, it's, it's, it's a time reference. Uh, so, the gloaming trencher there ye fill your hurdles like a distant hill, your pin ye would help to mend a mill in time of need, while throw ye pourers the dews distill like umber bead. Like whiskey. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it goes on and, and everybody thrills every year at Burns Day to hear the ode to the haggis. They piped the haggis in, in front of the crowd, you know, and they're, they're basically what they're doing is they are elevating the food of the common folk. That's mm -hmm. what they're doing. Okay. That uh, this this was the common folk in the common language of the time. So Scots is that, and and it's and it's just a it's it's great. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> the 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 old Scottish sayings they remind me of of the refranero español. Oh. You know you know I'm from Spain, so a compilation yeah. of, of thousands of traditional sayings that they have been used in Spain for for centuries. And actually, there's a saying for absolutely everything that happens in life from. From the time you're born to the time you pass, there, there, like, there's like, like what? Uh, 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 I mean, there's 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 so many uh, they, there's uh, expressions referring to uh, the weather, uh, to friendship, to uh, oh, kind of to marriage, right. to failure, to success, to money. So, and they have thousands, and incredibly, they're still be used today. I still use them. So, I would like you to share. Uh, some of, let's say three, if, if we can pull out three of your favorite Scottish sayings and the reason why you chose them. Um, I hope this question makes sense, but I understand the old Scottish sayings are very similar. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, oh, yeah. I think it's similar, right? Oh, so, so yes. Yeah, so, so uh, one of the, you know, if you were, uh, if you're having a gathering in the evening, and everyone was leaving late at night. You'd have your last, I've, I've got my log of Ulan here. Uh, your, your last dram of whiskey, you know, uh, as they're going out the door, you'd say, haste you back. Now you can probably get that one. Haste you back, come, come back soon. Okay, uh -huh. so that's a, that's, a pretty, uh, that's a pretty simple one. But uh, so here's the one though, that won't seem so, so, uh, so obvious. Long may your lum reek Lang may your lum reek. No, reek, reeking uh -huh. like smelling. Okay, L uh -huh. reeking like smelling. Okay, a lum is a chimney. Uh -huh. Lang is long, like all lang sign. We already heard that word. Lang is long time. So, so long may your chimney smoke. So yeah, you know, live long. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah, were, yeah. If, yeah. If, if Spock, if Spock were Scottish, he would not say live long and prosper. He would say, Lang may your lum rake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So and go ahead. An, yeah. No, no. You have another one. Can you? Uh, can oh, you this. Say, uh, some some of them, some of them are really juicy. And so so th this one is. Remember this, remember this is my second language. So you go into these <laughs> things. I'm completely lost. So but I, I'm enjoying. So, so. 
<laughs> this this is a great one. I just love this thing. Do not teach your granny to suck eggs. <laughs> do, do, do not teach your granny to suck eggs. So do not teach your granny to suck eggs. <laughs> With, and that means, you know, that don't teach, don't spend time teaching someone something they already know. Uh -huh. your, gra your, your grandmother, she knows how to suck eggs, you know, so, so do not teach your granny to suck eggs. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they're very, they're very, they're very earthy as these things always are, right? Yeah, you know? that sounds and, But they're, uh, but they're, uh, they're, they're great fun. Oh yeah, Absolutely. and there are lots of them. And you and you can go on the internet and you can look up, you know, great Scots sayings, and, and you'll find lots of these things. And, and the reason that I was asking these questions about language is because countries that they have such use of language and popular culture, they tend to be very interesting photographically, as you say, connected with traditions and and all those things. So if I was planning a trip to to Scotland, what would be the five words that I would need to know, like? Uh, Oh, uh, 101. Uh, Scottish words. 101 with Jim and Kike. What, what would that be? Yes, words. I'm not sure you would use all of these all the time, but... Uh, I mean, okay, useful, so, that. important. Okay, so, you, so you need to know the word coup. Okay. Coup. 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 Can you say it? Coup. 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 Uh, coup. 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 Yeah, uh -huh. coup. Yeah, like, uh, like a, a turtle dove. Coup. Yeah, coups, you know. Coup. That's a cow. Okay. Okay. And and a and a Highland cow would be a Highland coo. A Highland coo. Highland coo. Yeah. Highland coo. Okay. Yeah. You 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 can get any number of postcards in Scotland that's got Highland coo on it. So uh -huh. that's a, that's a very it's a very popular one. And if you don't know that, you're 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 so you're so, uh, so there's the word heed. 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 heed, heed, yeah, that's head. It's not so far off. Head. Okay. okay. So if I said to you, I have a ball heed. Okay. What would you so say? Your, your, yeah, your bald. Yeah, your head has no hair. Yeah, bald heek. Okay. Ball heed, ball heed. Yeah, yeah, ball heed. Ball heed. Okay. Ball heed. Okay. But this is a good one. This is a really good one for Scotland. Drek. Oh my God. Drek. 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 Like D in, in English, if I was going to spell it for you, so you could, it would be D-R-E-C-H. Drek. You know, Jim, it took me several months to learn how to say schedule properly. So... <laughs> <laughs> You're this, close. This, You're a little close. Drek. Drek. Yeah, Drek. Yeah, yeah. So Drek, it means rainy cold soppy raining uh, just you know it's just drek you know okay. so, makes so sense how how is it out drek you know and yeah. it usually mean you're just messy cold rainy wet you know that drek is good okay. it's a it's a really a really good word um this word you may this is a scotch word that you you probably already know gloaming no i didn't know it gloaming gloaming Gloaming, no, yeah. have no clue. Gloaming, okay. Gloaming is the time in, uh, of of late oh, dusk yeah. after okay. sunset. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like in the old phrase, in the gloaming. Okay. Yeah. I you know. So, I, I, so I it's, could... a, it's it's a word that this word that's fairly current in much English, but uh, you not may not realize that it's a yeah. uh, it is a Scots word, and they will use it quite a lot more than we, than we would. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I would like yeah. to play. Uh, I would like to play an, an easy game with you. I came yeah. up with, with 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 this idea when I was preparing an interview with uh, with Wade Davis. And, and mm -hmm. by the way, you can see that interview up here. Um, so um, I would like to mention uh, three words. I will tell you one one at a time. And I would I would appreciate if you can tell your thoughts, emotions, ideas, memories. Uh, something quick, right? Not not very elaborate, but maybe <laughs> uh, maybe an anecdote. Uh, it can it can be anything. Yeah. A moment in time. Sure. What if what if I say uh, lighthouse? Stevenson. Okay. You can <laughs> you, 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 you can elaborate a little bit more. I mean, I, I don't want to make it so short, but 
Uh, if you want to explain a little more around the, the your your answer, that would be great. There are about a hundred lighthouses in Scotland, and eighty of them were built by the Stevenson family. Okay. 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 See, I, 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 I didn't know that. Okay. That's why I'm asking you this question. Sure. And uh, and so they the, all the Stevensons went into lighthouse building, except one of them, a guy named Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote Treasure Island. Ah, okay. Yeah, that that Stevenson's. Yeah, so ah. Stevenson's. You if if you want to sound know-it-all in Scotland, you're driving down the road, you see a lighthouse, and you say, "Oh, one of the Stevenson lighthouses." You know, <laughs> you'll probably you'll probably be right. You know, and they'll um, and anybody around you will have to do some research to prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what What if I say uh, I don't know if I'm gonna mispronounce this, but Kalanasis stones. Kalanish. Kal Kalanish, Kalan yeah. Kalan Kalanish stones. Kalan Kalanish stones, yeah. Uh, Neolithic. <laughs> Neo yes. the, that's a, this, a, it's a it's a five thousand year old Neolithic stone circle, and and it's and it's it's a very important era, you see, because because the uh, they were putting up these stone circles, and but what they were really doing was they were settling down. And they were becoming farmers, so the Neolithic stone circles is almost a sure sign that they were becoming farmers. Hmm. And farming is where is a pretty big deal in human history. And, yeah. and if I if I recall properly, uh, I think I saw a beautiful photograph of yours that belonged to a National Geographic article around uh, mm. 2010 or, or so. Uh, and I recall that photograph as being very uh, peaceful, um, but also when I when I look at it, uh, it makes me feel at peace. So I wanted to ask you, and this is an improvised question, not connected with this game. What was what was the the the, the, the background of that photograph for the geographic and the moment? Was it really a scan? As it looked like, were you carrying lots of gear to light things around so it's not so peaceful as it looks? Uh, what, what is the no, story was, behind that, that image? It was exactly as peaceful as it looks. Okay. Yes, it was, because it was about uh, 3.30 in the morning um, and I had gone out the evening before uh, to do a sunset and gotten kind of like an okay picture and then I was heading, heading back to my hotel and decided, well, why? Why don't I just stay here and see what I could do? And I spent about two hours lighting some of the stones with one of my little flash units in my camera bag. And then I set that aside and I started light painting with my little flashlight, just a little flashlight that long. Um, and that's what you see in the lighting of that is it's about 3.30 in the morning. The, the blue, uh, you're far enough north that it never really gets dark. It just kind of gets blue in the north and then it gets blue in the east and oh, there's the dawn. And um, so it's about 3.30 in the morning. Uh, this is, uh, I had finally arrived at, at that composition after lots of lots of experimenting. It's a 30 second exposure. The actual taking of it is kind of frantic because during a 30 second exposure, I'm running through the picture, lighting up various stones from various locations. So to me, it was rather frantic, but the moment, uh -huh. The moment was very calm because as I remember, it was totally still that night. And I remember within a minute or of taking that picture, uh, I heard, I felt the first little, I, f I heard the first bird. You know, you, if you're up early enough in the morning, you hear the first bird that chirps. And almost in, uh, instantly after that, I felt the first puff of air on my cheek from the first breath of wind of the day, you know? And so, yes, it was uh, supremely uh, tranquil out there amongst those 5,000 year old stones. Yeah, it was a beautiful image. So one, one last word for this game. Uh, again, probably I'm gonna mispronounce it, but uh, Haggis. <laughs> Haggis, okay, yeah. Haggis, Haggis. It, it's, it's the food everybody who hasn't been to Scotland loves to hate. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a uh, uh, let's see, is it a sh a sheep's stomach stuffed with stuffed with uh, uh, you know uh, ground up meat? 
Well, you remember know. I'm from Spain, so we, we have a, a tradition of all these you, sausages you. made out of uh, everything you can imagine. So Every, Everything that's not a steak. Yes, <laughs> <Yeah>. right. <laughs> yes, and 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 oats and 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 oats mixed in there were they this was poor food and so they were always trying to stretch okay. uh, stretch the food you know so this this was the poor folks food um but it's it's very tasty you know and it's very good uh and you will you, if you were a chef in scotland you'd better have a haggis recipe hmm. you know it, it's got one of those kind of things of pride that yo yeah it's just like chefs in New Orleans better better have a bread pudding recipe. Yeah, yeah. you'd better be able to do haggis, and uh, and uh, and of course everybody turns up their noses at it, uh, but uh, it's actually but very it's good. good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, a couple of of last questions. So distillation dates back from I think it was Mesopotamia and the ancient Greeks, a process mm -hmm. that started with the production of of the first uh, perfumes. And I believe it was around the 1400s that people started making alcohol from grains. I think it was the Irish that first developed uh, samples of what is referred to as water for life, more commonly known as whiskey. But in reality, I think it's Scotland that has become the true um, reference for this centenary drink. <laughs> can, you, can you briefly talk about scotch? Your, your, oh, sure. your experiences, perception, thoughts, anything. Yep, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff. Lagavulin is one of those, and I've got some, uh, some, some Highland Park there too. Yes, yes, so, so yes, Uskaba, that's a, that's a Gaelic word, Uskaba, water of life, you know, uh -huh. and the, the, leg, the legend is that if you, if you drink just the right amount, you'll live forever. Okay. But, but you never know what exactly the right amount is. So you so have, you to, have keep to keep trying. on going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good saying. <laughs> okay. Uh, agua ardiente. No, what? Aguardiente in Colombia. Aguardiente. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's, so, that's, that's um, yes. I finally had somebody, I figured out that what they meant. They were saying fire water. So, yeah, oh, I got that. Yeah, I got it. So, um, uh, yes. So, Whiskey in Scotland, though, is a and, and there's no there's no e in Scottish whiskey. There is an Irish whiskey. There is an e k e y okay. in Scottish whiskey. There is no e. There's k y. So okay. remember that. Um, and but but the great thing about Scottish whiskey is is yes, all this history goes back centuries. Yes, um, but it, it is that it is very particular to a place. So I showed you Lagavulin, which is on the Isle of Isla. You can only make it there. Mm -hmm. you, you could not make Lagavulin someplace else. You could not dismantle that distillery and bring it over to America or ship it to Japan, put it back together and make Lagavulin whiskey. You could make a very good whiskey, but it would not be Lagavulin. And it would not have been aged in a warehouse down by the sea with rotting seaweed and salt water washing up against the, the, the walls of the warehouse and imparting all those particular flavors from that particular place. Mm -hmm. That's a very fundamental thing about it. So it's, it's intimately tied to geography and history and the lineage of all the, the distillers, the mm -hmm. families who've worked at that distillery uh, over time. So it has this nice geographical connection that is so particular. And it also has this lure that people often want to ask me, what's the best whiskey? And you say, oh, you would never do that. You would never want to know. You would never, it's as if you were drinking wine and you settled on one wine from one vineyard and yep. that's the only wine you were gonna drink for the rest of your life. Yeah, you wouldn't do that. No, the whole, the whole thrill is that there are over a hundred distilleries and some of the whiskey is, is bottled when it's eight years old and some of it when it's 12 and 15 and 18 and 25 and some of it they put in cherry cask and some of it they put in, in uh, 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 other kinds of cask, you know, and it all is different and it's all an adventure of exploration. Mm -hmm. And you're, there is always this lure 
that you'll discover something. <laughs> you know that you know, it's kind of you know, water of life. Yes, you know, that you know, all of a sudden you'll be you'll be there, and all of a sudden you'll discover something you haven't seen, haven't uh -huh. understood before uh, in, in the whiskey. Yeah, that's what that's what single malt whiskey in Scotland is all about. Okay, okay, wonderful, wonderful answer. Thank you for saying. So everybody has heard about the uh, the Loch Ness. So I would like to. Well, you think yeah. about Scotland if you read books, you're like you're, you're like myths. Uh, you know, you have to ask this question. So I would like to know the story behind the Loch Ness, most commonly known. I think they call it or refer to it as Nessie. And can yeah, you share Nessie. a little a, a little bit about the the particular location, the myth, or the history, or anything you wanna yeah, you wanna okay. tell us about right. the the Loch Ness? Yeah, yeah. So, so so the first thing to understand about Loch Ness is about the the lock the the lake you know uh -huh. is it's, it's extremely deep and it's, it's extremely deep because of geology because the main bit of scotland was sitting up here and a bit of scotland that had been down in the antarctic and traveled clear up uh into the northern hemisphere came around and crashed into it <laughs> uh -huh. crashed into it and caused this deep rift and it's a thousand feet deep wow that's pretty good the lock is deeper than the sea than the north sea surrounding it it's very very deep okay mm -hmm. so so it automatically has this mystery about it okay so so that that's the, the and it go and it divides sort of southern scotland from northern scotland in a in a certain way the great the great rift there so and then there's the monster. And um, this goes clear back to St. Columba. St. Columba was one of those Celtic monks that came over from Ireland and he brought Christianity to, uh, to Scotland out on the Isle of, uh, of, of uh, Iona, okay? And he is credited with in 565 of repelling a monster in Loch Ness. That's the first recorded thing, you know, and apparently, St. Columbus out there, there's a storm, the monster is coming, the monster's bothering some poor Scott, you know, out there, you know, and, and St. Columba makes the sign of the cross, something like this, and he drives, he drives the monster away. That's the first one. Um, but it doesn't, then there's something later in the 1800s where uh, somebody saw something, and then there was a newspaper report in it was 1933 or 34, something like this, about somebody who had seen it, and then a, a reporter wrote it up in a really good way. And then it took off and it was off to the races, you know? Uh -huh. And then, however, what, what happened was, what really cemented it was, a couple of guys found, a, found an old log that okay. kind of had a crooky neck like this so that the log would float just under the water, you see? Kind of being waterlogged, but this one branch would stick up like that, you see, and they pulled it behind a boat and they took a picture. Okay. They made sure it was kind of grainy so you couldn't really make it out. And they took a picture and that, here, there, here it is. Yeah, yep. the, the there, image that's that it. everybody has seen before. <laughs> yeah, and um, I got to make sure my, uh, my sound is still here on Kiki. Uh, yeah, sir. I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, should be. And they towed it, and that picture got used over and over and over again as the evidence of the Loch Ness uh, monster, you know. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, when one of the guys was dying, he made a deathbed confession. <laughs> 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 he confessed to this prank, um, uh -huh. but of course, it doesn't stop anybody. It doesn't stop anybody. There are there are two um, Loch Ness research centers on the uh, on the north uh, banks of Loch Ness. They're they're right next door to each other, and they uh, they both claim to be the legitimate Loch uh -huh. Ness research center. Um, they sell, um, there's a guy up at the north end of the lock who sits out there with a big old pair of military binoculars, keeping a vigil for the Loch Ness Monster. Anytime there's a news 
a new sighting, the newspaper guys will come out and interview him, you mm -hmm. know, and it's an industry. It's, a, sure it's an industry. It's, it's, and there you can get little, little Nessie bottles of whiskey. And, you know, it's just, it's just everywhere. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's great fun. And I, I confess, of course, being science-based, I don't believe a word of it, but I will confess that as I'm, I'm driving down the highway on the side of the lock, <clears throat> lock I always watch. <laughs> uh -huh. you, you never know, right? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so uh, one, one last, last question. So mm -hmm. let's say if, if a travel photographer or an avid photographer or pretty much anybody was planning a visit to Scotland, what are the five places that they should not miss and why? Like brief description of, I mean, the, yeah. the list of yeah, places yeah. And, and why they should photograph or, or, or visit those particular locations? What is special about them? I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll talk more kind of about, about regions, because that probably- Or, 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 or regions, yeah, yeah. if, if in, that in makes general. More, more sense but to you. Edinburgh, go to Edinburgh. Yeah, I mean, even if you're a nature photographer, go to Edinburgh. Edinburgh has, is, just, is just loaded. It's got the castle up on the crag, You know, there's this beautiful park down below. It's got all the history. Um, uh, it's it's just a, a photographer's delight and uh, and very accessible. So it's um, uh, Glasgow is a great city as well, but it, it doesn't have quite the same accessibility photographically. So I, if you're a photographer, I'd say I'd say that. Um, certainly, I would I would send everybody up up into the highlands. That's the next easiest kind of thing to get to probably. Um, yeah. And that would be, um, that would be, uh, oh, just place like the Cairngorms, Cairngorms yeah. National Park, beautiful rolling uh, hills, heather covered hills, um, all those kinds of things. Lots of, lots of beautiful little towns and, and all that. The next place I would, I would sort of say to consider is you can always go to the Isle of Skye. The Isle of, Isle of Skye is dramatic. It's great for hikers, all of that. But um, Skye has a bridge. And that means it gets lots of traffic. So mm -hmm. Skye gets crowded. So mm -hmm. I, while, I, while you can certainly go up there and you can, uh, you can fold the, photograph the old man of store and all those locations, great. Just be aware that you need to book ahead. Mm -hmm. It's no longer the case that you can just go to Scotland and drive around and, and hope you'll find some cute little hotel. Book ahead. <laughs> but I would urge people, if they can, if they can devote enough time to get out to the some of the other islands. Mm -hmm. That could be some of the small isles. It could be the Outer Hebrides. Particularly if you're like a landscape photographer, go out to Lewis and Harris. They, uh, Lewis and Harris are... Uh, uh, and Harris particularly has hugely dramatic landscapes. The west coast of Lewis does too. And then, you, then you've got the Callanish Stones there mm -hmm. um, that, that you were talking about and, uh, and lots of other things. So, so something, something like this. The only problem is it's going to be about a three hour ferry boat out there. You see, so mm -hmm. it, it, it adds another half a day each way really to, to get out and back. Yeah. The other place I would really recommend is Orkney. Orkney, uh, because it's just such a beautiful little set of islands off the northeast tip of Scotland. It's about an hour ferry boat ride, so you can do it a little quicker. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, 22, 20, 20 inhabited islands with about 22,000 people. Biggest town is 8,000. It's got this great old Viking cathedral, um, St. Magnus. Um, it's got stone circles, more than you can shake a stick at. Ring of Brodgar, Stan Stones of Stennis, Maze Howe Tomb, uh, Scara Bray, a 5,000 year old Stone Age village. Oh, yeah, it's just absolutely loaded with all of that, uh, that kind of stuff and, uh, and a delightful uh, place to go as well. And then the final place is less, doesn't get the attention, but I think is, is, which, is which really is rich. That? Is go, Go down to the borders. Okay. In other words, in other words, not the highlands. Uh -huh. Go down to the borders. The borders, anyway, that's basically Scotland south of Edinburgh and Glasgow. And it's rolling hilly country, lots of sheep, 
lots of the uh, ruins of the monasteries from the Middle Ages. So Dryborough Abbey, Jedborough Abbey, Melrose. Melrose is where the heart of Robert the Bruce is buried. I mean, there's actually a lead crypt there with his heart buried <laughs> in Melrose Abbey. And they are, so great ruins of, of all those abbeys, beautiful, beautiful things. Uh, it's a very different story than the Highlands. And, uh, and it's, it's a great swing through, two or three days through there uh, is very rich. Fantastic. Well, Jim, I'm sure you have other things to do. I have to say that I, I really enjoy the, the interview and, and the conversation and getting to know you a little better. I hope it was the same on, on your side. And, and I sure. appreciate that you took the time to, to answer all my, my questions, even though 